Music is in the air because I am on my way to the Bloomingdale School of Music in New York City. Bloomingdale is this hidden gem on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. We've been operating here um, for more than 50 years out of a brownstone built in around 1900. If you were walking down the street, you probably wouldn't even know what takes place in the building. You might see the banner flying above the street, you might hear some music coming out of the windows, but the minute you walk in the door and you hear music from all around, it's like, I had no idea this was going on. As soon as you step in, you are surrounded by music. You hear like the echoes of like a flute in like the fifth floor, and then there's like an oboe playing in the library. The moment I stepped foot in here, I felt seen, I felt cared for, and I think other people feel that too. I don't feel stressed, I don't feel any tension, I just feel like I'm ready to pick up my violin and, and just start playing with people I really care about. You come here and you instantly feel like the creative like passion of this place. <laughs> The building itself was actually first owned by another musician, vaudeville performer named Fanny Bryce. And when it came open for sale in the early 70s, the founder of the school, David Greer, was able to garner funding of $60,000 from some donors. So Bloomingdale School of Music serves about 650 people every week. We see ourselves as sort of a center for where anyone on the Upper West Side can come and be part of a musical community. We all support each other and we all play to each other's strengths. It just like lifts you up and helps you become the best artist you could be. Bloomingdale's signature program, the Music Access Project, is a three-year pre-college training program that features high quality instruction and personal mentoring. The MAP program targets the youth of New York City who cannot gain access to similar programs because of high tuition costs and limited financial aid. I grew up in the Bronx, so this was something I never thought you know, I'd ever have the opportunity to you know, encounter at any point. It's helped solidify my passion for music. This school has been such an important safe haven for me. I do have Tourette's Syndrome and my teachers, they were all here for me when I was struggling. It feels like a second home to me. I am not doing well financially and they offered a scholarship. I've learned how to become a better musician, both socially and technically. That's sometimes rare, right? We need more of that, not less of that. And plenty of neighborhoods in New York, you feel a lot less of that. So this is beautiful, this space is beautiful and it's maintained that. This life-changing school cannot function without generous support from donors and volunteers. Making renovations, very challenging. Although Bloomingdale has been able to maintain its historical charm, there are two spaces that need some serious tuning. The concert hall is kind of plain and boring. It's kind of underwhelming. The walls are like this kind of grayish color. It's just not very like secure in the sound. It's got acoustic problems. It's creaky. Our curtain is really a shower curtain. If someone flushes the toilet two flights up, you hear it. It needs some help. Oh, the backyard. Our backyard is one of the most beautiful spaces we have at the school, but we don't have proper access to it and we don't have proper upkeep to it. I've only been to the backyard once in my whole Bloomingdale career. It's clearly very hazardous. No one really uses it and it's like a wasted space kind of. If George came to Bloomingdale School of Music, I think it would really help us improve in like our motivation. I think that would just mean everything because it would show how much you guys believe in the art that we're creating, in the community that we've built. Once people know about it and find out about it, you realize this magical place is happening every day and has been for years. It would just be so gratifying to know that it matters and it matters to the community and we're gonna have like a place to flourish and have a space that'll represent the general culture of Bloomingdale. George to the Rescue is sponsored in part by Scotch Painters Tape. For more info, go to scotchbrand.com slash painters tape. Hey. Josh, welcome back to George to the Rescue, but more importantly, welcome back to the Bloomingdale School of Music. I know, it's amazing. It is time to rescue the Bloomingdale School of Music. Helping us out is Josh Wiener from Silver Lining. 
So yeah, here we are, Josh, the concert hall that it literally has not changed since you were a student here. The recital hall is exactly what the recital hall was in 1970s. So the mission has changed, the scope of the school has changed, the space is hurting. You'd think in a music hall, in a place where people are performing, you would have better acoustics. And here, like, just us talking, it's like, oh, oh, like, it's what, totally what canyon are we in? And there's other stuff going on in the back too. I mean, it's, it's gonna be incredible what we're gonna do. So not only in there, but out here, I mean, look at this. It's terrible. Right off of the concert hall is a courtyard that has never been touched, but it has so much potential. I mean, this is the place that you could have outdoor concerts, spring, summer, or fall, and right now it is being totally underutilized. Concrete's off level. People can trip over those bumps over there. Right. There's nothing aesthetically pleasing back here. If it was happened. a person, you would say it's disheveled. <laughs> yeah. So what so. do you say we go get those jackhammers and make some music of our own? I'm with you. Inside, there's not a lot that's being ripped out, but outside, we're taking it all out. We're taking out the fence, we're taking out the concrete, we got jackhammers, we're starting from scratch. Ready, guys? <laughs> I know George could probably demo the whole thing himself in a couple hours, but I brought Signature Demo because I know that he needed 15 guys plus getting rid of all the trash. You gotta help George out, you know, otherwise he'll break his own back. This, we're getting into some of this real New York bedrock. Not quite, you're not there yet. Not there, well, well, it we're going feel to. like that. Yeah, I feel like it is. I'll <laughs> be in the subway, the I'll be in the subway station pretty soon. Yeah, that'd be interesting, Shadow. Yeah, I'll be down in the one line. I can't even imagine what we are going to unearth digging in a back courtyard in New York City. Satisfying, isn't it, George? I mean, treasure, old bodies, Jimmy Hoffa. Let's see this rock right here? Yep. Underneath it are buried the ashes of David Greer. He was the organist who said, kids in New York need music even though the schools had gotten rid of the music program. We don't want to demo this all and lose David's ashes. So you ready to do a little archeology? span Yes, sir. Let's see if see we can what, find it. Let's see what we can find. See these two things on your side? Those are rat traps. Yeah, I know. Let me know if you see any rats. I'm going in. George to the Rescue is sponsored in part by 3M. For more information, go to 3MDIY.com. I never unearthed ashes on George to the Rescue before. The founder of the school, David Greer, wanted his ashes buried in this courtyard. I got to protect those and make sure that nothing happens to them. Josh, I give you David Greer's ashes. Ugh. You got it? Yep, let's protect these and we'll Don't put them back it. later. Whew. George pulled the ashes out. We've given it to the executive director for safekeeping until the end of the project, and then we'll probably have a ceremony around re-putting them into a space in the new backyard. Thank you, sir, for doing what you did. We're gonna make your school even better than you, than you started it. Whew. He'd be proud. Creating a professional looking and sounding concert hall is no easy task. So I gotta bring in the experts. Helping me out on the architect front, we got Alyssa and Rob from Rogers Partners. And on the theatrical side, we have Bruno and Chris from Charcoal Blue. The acoustics are terrible. We need to make it sound better. I mean, this is the Bloomingdale School of Music and where they perform their music, it's not where you'd wanna be listening to music. So uh, that's why I need your help. It lacks some of the intimacy that you would want in a performance space. And I think we're able to provide some of that with theatrical components and acoustic components. Working with Bruno and his team, we're, we're looking at the ceiling actually as being the main design feature. Uh -huh. And it's where you have the most impact acoustically in the space. These are the projects that we love. You know, you might do a fancy offices or homes or something like that, but this actually is gonna impact entire communities, generations of kids. Wow, Ooh. look at this, huh? Moving yeah, and shaking. A lot. Forte Plumbing came in here, re-ran all the sprinkler pipes because they were totally in the way. Then I've got Apollo Electric. They're running all new electric for the ceiling, new switching. We had an electrical plan that's pretty aggressive. Right. This is an old 
old townhouse and the electric wasn't absolutely as dated as the house was. So as soon as we got in here, the electrician started surveying the existing system. We were tripping breakers when we were demoing outside when George was running the jackhammer. So immediately they had to run new wires, new circuits in order to make the recital hall be able to accommodate the new lighting that's going in. When the paneling goes up on the ceiling, that'll have that flow going back to the space because it's, you know, it's, a, it's a theater. And you can hear the difference in this room already. Remember when we first walked oh, in, yeah. it was all echoing? Yeah. So this is all kind of dampened now. The flooring will help. Also, your buddy Evan yeah. has been crushing it outside. It's nice to see that we got all this new fencing going yeah, in and everything. Yeah, it's coming in nicely. Once we put up the fence, we're going to start, we're going to stain it. And then the paving, what we're doing is we're going to do a paving that looks like a keyboard. So it's going to be in bluestone um, with the black kind of insets for the keys. Wait, wait, so you're saying that the ground, when you walk out, it's going to be like, like from the movie Big? But yes. Obviously not playing. Yes. It's, it's going to be a giant keyboard? Yes, exactly. When this is done, it's going to be an amazing space. It's going to be uh, a space that reflects sort of what's going on inside, but it's also going to be playful, a lot better than what it looks like now. Introducing 3M's updated line of Scotch Painters Tapes. Every paint job is unique, but they all start the same way, with the right preparation. The family of Scotch Painters Tape are specifically designed for your surfaces. The best paint jobs start with Scotch Painters Tape. I'm really just so impressed on how everything's coming together. Working in the city is no easy feat. And we're tackling an outdoor area and an indoor area. All right, so Evan, talk me through what it takes to put down a patio, especially here in New York City. There's no way like, pulling up a truck no, in somebody's driveway. I mean, we isn't. literally had to bring all this yeah, stuff through. Yeah, it's all hand done. It's all brought, brought in and everything else. Let's let's cut some blue stuff. Okay. All right, here we go. Now I can make piano keys out of blue stuff. <laughs> Put that on the resume. Exactly. Evan is absolutely killing it in the backyard. From the 40 Visuals Mural, Site One Hardscaping Materials, and Hicks Nursery, we have transformed a useless space into an outdoor oasis. Evan, I come bearing hey, the Bloomingdale School yeah. of Music founder, yeah. David D. Greer's yeah. ashes. David D. Greer was a musician and a pianist. Well, David Greer, right. that's right, DG. Yep. So we figured on the keyboard, why not put him within the G? G for George, G for Greer. It's a great idea. George, do you want to do the honors? Bye, right, David. We have all of this gravel. We have this white gravel and this dark gravel. What we want to do is we're going to use this resin, which is going to lock all of this gravel together. But we don't want to get any of this resin on our bluestone. So in order to protect the bluestone, I'm using 3M's Scotch exterior surface tape. The nice part about that, it's waterproof. It's meant to stick on exterior surfaces, rough surfaces like bluestone. Oh. Right? Ha. This huh? is a transformation. And not only visually, you can hear it. Josh has brought countless world-class vendors into this performance space. From Dara Wood Floors to Metropolitan Painting Interiors, Sage AV, it is an immersive transformation from the ground up. The lighting panels can control all the different lights. Right, so you got the house, you got the stage, you can do your presets. And check out this curtain. This curtain is theater grade curtain. 90% of the shows on Broadway have the same curtains by this company, Iweiss, and check it out. It covers all these closets. You know, I've always wanted to perform on a Broadway stage and, you know, I, This is it. This, well, this is as close to maybe as I'm, I'm gonna get. Well, the room has, uh, has everything. You know, I can't wait for the chairs to be set up. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it needs something else. I... One more cherry on top. This project is going fantastic, but the crown jewel is a Steinway & Sons grand piano, and I'm lucky enough to get a tour of the factory. You know, you talk about pianos, you talk about a Steinway, and it's like the creme de la creme de la creme. You're gonna see an 11 month process in, in a very short amount of time today. I, let's, let's do it.
I love history, I love craftsmanship, I love tradition. That is everything Steinway & Sons embodies. You can, you can really see how everything starts as, you know, nondescript pieces of wood and then begins the journey towards looking more like a piano. And in the next area, you can kind of see that happening. Anthony, what in the world is this? <laughs> this is a rim press for a Model B piano. This is a Model B that is being born right now. So it's gonna stay in this rim press overnight, uh, 24 hours or so. Over 200 hands touch a Steinway piano. It's incredible seeing all the craftsmanship, the labor, the love, the energy, the sweat, the tears. So, yeah, now I see why it takes 11 months to build one of these things. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of details, a lot of process. Access granted. Welcome, Mr. Gilroy. Whoa, welcome. Whoa. So here we go. This is the home to our most exclusive pianos. Whoa. Wow, like each one is like a, its own piece of art. Being able to do this for the Bloomingdale School of Music and the city and everybody coming together to make this happen, for the kids themselves, being able to play with instruments like a Steinway & Sons piano, it's gonna help them grow so much more. So uh, thank you for being a part of this. Well, great, great to see you, great to meet you. Thank you very thank much, you. you too. Without further ado, you guys are all in show business. What do you say? <laughs> Let's do Shall it. Shall we? Yeah. Oh, oh wow, wow, <laughs> wow. I can't even comprehend this. walking up to the building and like before we walked in I had butterflies I was excited I was nervous just about what is this gonna be and then what's possible ah! <gasps> When I first walked into the new space, I was just wowed. And not just visually, listen, hear it, Whoa. right? The sound. <laughs> it looked different, it looked elegant, it looked classy. I, it just took my breath away. Oh man, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh I am at loss for words. For one, the soundproofing is making a huge difference because that's gonna make everyone more professional, you know? It's, it's the attention to detail. The pattern in the floor kind of took me, and it's kind of like those lines that are so long, it's just sort of lead right up to the front of the piano. And the piano! Yeah. The piano! <laughs> The piano's big. You like it that is, piano? I mean, I've heard three people already say they want to take piano lessons again. That piano is really beautiful. So I'm just excited to, to see how it makes people feel appreciated and showcased. This is the same space? Same space. Broadway quality curtains. Actually, the company that donated the curtains is the same company okay. that perks the curtains <laughs> in 95% of all Broadway shows. Whoa! Whoa! It's like, whoa! Whoa! It's like, whoa. <laughs> When I first walked into the um, new concert hall, I just felt really inspired. The amount of color that's in there, it's, it's like, just like, like the music that's gonna play in there. It's gonna be, it's really vibrant. It feels like we're walking into like a real concert setting. The atmosphere feels a lot more professional. I noticed that there were lights and a projector. <laughs> I'm... This is awesome. I don't even, I can't even say anything. This is, this is so mind-blowing. As a former student, walking through the doors and kind of seeing the transformation, that you know, I had a flashback of 25 years ago when I first walked in the doors here and how different it is now and how beautiful it is. To, to be able to come in and, and see something that's brand new, um, to be able to hear the acoustics in there, to be able to go and visually be stimulated and see the different colors on the wall. It's, it's just an amazing experience. Come on out. The show is about to begin. <laughs> I don't even recognize this. Whoa. What? Oh, <laughs> oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That backyard, oh my goodness. It's a completely different space now, you know? Oh, that is amazing! <laughs>
When I first walked into New Courtyard, I didn't even know where I was. And the mural, which on the one side is so cool and beautiful, and then you go around the corner and it's like this explosion of color and our logo. And th that lighting is really pretty. I'm excited to maybe have outside concerts. Well, you know, I, I never knew David Greer, but clearly his vision and mission for the school of access to music in a home, in a place that's welcoming, is only magnified with what's happened here. What do you think? Thumbs up, double thumbs up, hang loose, rock and roll. <laughs>